up on Look Today. Well, SPAC's Rock and Run took place over the weekend and raised close to $30,000. I've got details. And the first annual Law Enforcement Officers Weekend was a huge success. I've got those details. And the Complete Streets Initiative will help Saratoga Springs develop into a safer and healthier city. More on that coming up. It's all ahead on Look Today. Welcome everyone, I'm Jay Hood Jackson and this is Look Today. Well, on tonight's program, I sit down with Riley Walsh. Now he's a ninth grader from the Boston Spa School District and he's here to talk about winning a national video competition. I also sit down with Cindy Swadba. Now she's a volunteer for Saratoga Pride and we're joined by Trace Ellis. He's a trans advocate for Pride Unites and they're here to talk about a public discussion that's happening tomorrow at the Saratoga Springs Public Library. Plus, we've got your weather for the Tri-North Counties. But first, these headline stories. Well, in our lead story, SPAC's Rock and Run took place over the weekend, featuring over 1,200 runners. Rock and Run kicks off all of the fundraisers for the Saratoga Performing Arts Center. Now, this event featured more than 50 volunteers, 15 musical bands, and over 1,200 runners. Now, this annual event raised close to 30 thousand dollars. Well, the proceeds benefit the Vivian Anderson Children's Programming Initiative at SPAC. Now, next fundraiser for SPAC will be the New York City Ballet Gala. That's happening on July 8th, and it's hosted by the Junior Committee. And of course, we will have full coverage of that. In other news, well, the first annual Law Enforcement Officers Weekend took place in Lake George over this past weekend. The event was a huge success with over 100 police officers and their families. Now, there were seminars for the officers as well as award ceremonies. Well, we spoke to Mayor Bob Blaze of Lake George about the event. We drew uh, officers as far away as Arkansas, Florida, uh, Maryland, and the majority of the officers that came uh, were here for the first time. And a great majority of the nearly 100 that attended uh, came with their families mm -hmm. and they stayed for two or three nights and they can't wait to come back. <laughs> Great. Switching from news to weather. Well, today saw some rain. Temperatures were hovering in the 50s. We can expect more sunshine tomorrow, so let's see how the week is shaping up. For a more detailed look at our weather, let's head to the Glens Falls Weather Center for a look at your first forecast. Well, thank you, Jesse. Let's take a look at the forecast. First off, we've got a frontal system laying right across the area. And that front, as it continues southward across the South Atlantic seaboard, a lot of shower activity associated with it. And we'll see scattered showers for tonight, a cloudy situation, too. The front's moving pretty quickly. This high pressure ridge behind me is building in. Our overnight lows, as you can see, generally in the mid and upper 40s. So we've got a cloudy situation through the evening hours and a wet situation with that front pushing through and temperatures all across the area around 44 to 46. But as that front continues on eastward and moves quickly out to sea, we should expect to see a pleasant forecast as we look ahead over the next 12 hours behind the front. 46 the low tonight with showers, southerly winds. Here is the front moving out. Sunny skies, 72 for Tuesday. An improving forecast, a much better forecast. The early morning temperatures around 54 to 58, partly cloudy skies for the 8 o'clock hour. Now, as we look ahead at the extended forecast, the sunshine is with us again for Wednesday. A slight chance for showers, about a 30% chance, high 75. A little better chance for showers Thursday. We have a Midwestern front that should be arriving for Thursday night and Friday. We've got showers at 60% for Friday, high 69. And then we should see a clear out for Saturday, partly sunny skies with a 30% chance for showers then, but a nice day expected for Saturday. That's it from the Weather Center. Back to you, Jesse. Great. Back to the news. Well, the Complete Streets Initiative in Saratoga Springs is underway. And this is a very detailed, comprehensive plan to make Saratoga Springs a safer, healthier, and busier city. The initiative will create bike lanes, trails, and more connectivity in all of the region. Now, an independent short film was recently made titled A Crosswalk in Time, 
which explores and promotes the Complete Streets Safety Bike Initiative. And we spoke to Tina Carton. She's from the Planning Development and part of the Complete Streets Initiative. We spoke to her about the movie. You see people really wanting to reach out and have that again. So have that connection between neighbors, be able to go for a walk in the evening and be able to talk to your neighbors. And uh, I think that's a really great part of the movie is it really kind of goes full circle around where you see that this isn't a new idea. This is something that's been going on for a very long time. You know, bike safety, pretty much anything with wheels. So it could be tricycles, bicycles, wheelchairs or whatever. We really have to be reminded that there are you know, around us when we're driving. Up next, I sit down with Riley Walsh. Now, he's a ninth grader for the Boston Spa School District, and he's here to talk about winning a national video competition. Great interview. Plus, I also sit down with Cindy Swadba. Now, she's a volunteer for Saratoga Pride, and we're joined by Trace Ellis. He's a trans advocate for Pride Unites, and they're here to talk about a public discussion and panel that's happening tomorrow at the Saratoga Springs Public Library. But first, if you see news happening, you want to share a story idea. How about join us for an interview? Then give us a call on the hotline. The number is 798-8000. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Look Today. It's Monday, so we'll do a look ahead. Uh, this week, Diane Labruzzo, Adirondack Ballet Theater, is going to be in. Uh, representatives from Jaeger and Flint are coming in. Economic Opportunity Council will be in. Doug Irish supervisor is in to give his perspective on the uh, conversation I had last week with Mark Westcott on the Watershed Coalition. It should be interesting. And uh, Carmen Bogle, mayor of Cambridge, is also coming in. Uh, that's about all the time we have tonight. He's beyond the headlines and tracks. And speaking of tracks, we have a treat for you. We're going to take the program out tonight with one of the bands that was featured in SPAC's Rock and Run, Paradox Saints. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow.